Hello and good morning. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Gregson. Welcome to Shifting Lanes. Today, as you can see, I'm finally back in the Volvo V70R. It is running. We got it running and we had some help uh, on one other issue. Um, so I want to go over that today as well as talk to you about what it's like to own these cars for an entire year. Believe it or not, we've actually owned this car for a whole year, whether it be this one or our old gray one from 2004 that was an automatic. So let's go over exactly what it's like to own a Volvo V70R for an entire year. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. And if you like what you see, please consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up at the end of the video. Uh, if you don't know what this is, and if you've never seen any of our videos, this is my 2005 Volvo V70R. I picked it up from uh, a gentleman that's well known in the automotive community in Volvo. His name is Alex Spinner. Uh, this is a Magic Comma or Magic Blue with Atacama interior car. We used to own a gray 2004 um, Volvo V70R that we picked up from a dealer in Pennsylvania a year ago. Uh, all of these videos you can basically check out in the link in the description below. It's a link to the whole playlist of all of the Volvo videos we've made over the last year. But let's get going, get on the road, and I can talk to you about what it's like to own this car as well as how we got this thing back on the road. While we're here paused at a stoplight, um, if you don't know what this car is, this is a 2005 Volvo V70R. When Volvo uh, created the P2 generation or second generation of the uh, R series, the V70 R series, they came out with this one. This is the P2 generation. This car in particular is very awesome. It is sort of a sleeper wagon and I affectionately called uh, the ones that I have owned the dad wagon because the whole goal of this series was to show that these cars are really cool and that you can have an enthusiast's dad mobile or mom mobile uh, if, if you really wanted to and it could be sort of right from the start. We originally said this car was going to become or this series was going to become an M3 killer. That actually is still back on. If you haven't seen it, check out our last video which I will put in the card above. That talks about uh, the fixes we did to this car recently as well as the challenge between this car and the M3 is now back on. Uh, if you looked at our first video from a year ago, we wanted to basically turn the original Volvo into an M3 killing dadmobile. And that needed to be done where it needed a manual swap, there was a lot of horsepower that needed to be added, uh, and a lot of things that needed to be done. We got the suspension done on that car. Uh, we had parts from Elevate, it was uh, lowering springs as well as um, sway bars uh, added to that car. and it it made the car handle so so well it was unbelievable uh, what those parts did to liven up the chassis and to liven up that car and they were 4c compliant so that was really cool so uh, what happened was I spoke with Alex about this car and he said hey I have someone interested in, in buying it do you want it this has a manual this is literally everything you want and we ended up buying this one because it it ticked all the right boxes it's rare it's an amazing color the interior is great and basically it turned into a let's restore it so you know that's what we're going to do we're still going to restore this thing but we're also still going to make it an m3 killer because what we did is we bought an m3 ourselves turned out to be not really a great car in the sense of uh being good for restoration and you know being a good project car there were a lot more problems with it than we originally thought and we ended up just getting rid of it because it was such a headache. So we got rid of that, but there have been a few people that reached out that are very interested in seeing what this thing can do against a stock M3. Now, stock for stock, the M3 is going to win. It's lighter, it has more power, and it is generally a, a more sports car. This is a tuned up wagon at, at its core. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna restore this thing. We're going to uh, make the interior much nicer. We're going to have it repainted. We're also going to have it tuned. We're going to put some uh, go fast bits on it, including uh, you know a better breathing system, uh, intercooler pipes, um, probably a larger turbo or a hybrid turbo, uh, and just basically anything you could think of in the Volvo community that will make this thing get right around 380 to 400 crank horsepower. We're going to get it done because we have uh, a very exciting announcement. We have our first ever channel sponsor that is going to be on board with us, and that is FCP Euro. So a huge thank you to FCP Euro for sponsoring this 
video, as well as future Volvo videos and the rest of this build. They have given us a uh, generous amount of money to uh, basically buy parts from their catalog. And if you don't know who FCPRO is, one, where have you been in the European car community in the last like five to 10 years? And two, they are an amazing company that has a lifetime warranty on every single product they sell, essentially. Uh, any wear item that you have, and this, that includes oil. You can send back to them and they will send it back to you. They will send back to you new parts for free. So if you buy a control arm from them and it magically snaps in half, you can send it back to them and under their lifetime replacement warranty, they will send you a new part for free. They also have free shipping uh, for any order of $49 or more. So FCP Euro is one of those companies that uh, you want to check out, you want to go to their parts catalog first because everything they do is customer focused. It is unbelievable how awesome they are as a company. So if you don't know who FCP Euro is, please visit the link in the description below. We'll be making a video about what parts we're going to get from them specifically to help this thing get to be an M3 killer. So stay tuned for that coming in the future. What is this thing like to live with for a year? What are these cars like to live with for a year? Uh, it's a lot like other older cars, to be quite honest with you. Um, I'm, a, I'm someone from the Subaru community and in the WRX specific community, there are a lot of great people. Um, I have found that over the years, uh, the Subaru, Subaru community is pretty close knit. The Volvo community, it's 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 similar, but it's slightly different. Everyone seems to be a little bit more close knit because Subaru is such a large uh, company and a large enthusiast company because they've been making WRXs for years and years and years and years and years. Volvo has sort of crafted this and carved this little niche of really cool, fun to be around and talk to enthusiasts through cars like this, through the V70R, through uh, the Polestar brand, and now, well now, actual brand, and Polestar tuned cars, um, and all the way back to the 850Rs that they used to run in the British Touring Car Championships. So, with that being said, I think that I'm much more enjoying my time as a Volvo owner than I am as a WRX owner. Uh, just because of how quirky this car is, I, I like this car better than the WRX. Um, the community is, uh, the communities are about the same, so I, I really like everyone that I've met through both, so I can't say that I like people better than others, but as far as the overall ownership experience, I'd, said, uh, I'd say I've enjoyed Volvo more than Subaru. Uh, this car I actually enjoy more than the Subaru too. I think this thing has a more unique sound. Uh, I really love how this thing comes alive with a, with a cool exhaust like we have. And if you haven't heard this car, Take a listen to this. It sounds incredible and I couldn't be more in love with this exhaust as well as how this car sounds. The car overall is a very capable car. It handles well, it's a great cruiser, um, it's definitely not an M3 killer right now, but it will be once we do all the work. Uh, but, I mean, this, these things are, they're, they're interesting to own because with any older car, you're going to have problems. And we've had no short of our fair share of problems with this car. There have been, you know, it hasn't run properly. There was a lot to be fixed. There's, you know, the, 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 the sunroof here actually is totally broken and needs to be completely redone and replaced. We'll do that when we do the headliner. And it's just one of those things that is, you know, a little a little odd. And there's, there's a lot more odds and ends in this car that are broken um, than I would have liked to have had. What, what is it like to own this car uh, over the course of a year? Uh, it's a bit of a trip. <laughs> These things are super fun to drive. They're quirky. They sound great. They handle well. They're not M3 killers off the bat, but you can turn them into M3 killers pretty easily, uh, you know, with the right amount of parts and obviously money. But they are, they're such a blast to drive. They're, they do have some, some pitfalls. They do have things that are wrong with them. You're going to need to fix them. You're going to need to become sort of a little bit of a mechanic yourself uh, if you want to save some cash. But also just because they're fun to, they're fun to, to, to work on. They're fun to drive. Uh, and they're just, they're just overall fun 
quirky little cars that uh, if you're an enthusiast, you'll really like. Um, but if you're an enthusiast, you may also hate because of how many things that may go wrong with them uh, and just the general, you know, ownership of old cars. Uh, but if you're into that sort of thing, this is definitely the car for you. These things, when they came out new, were around between forty-five to fifty thousand dollars. I believe they based it like forty-four nine, um, or forty-five, depending on where you were in the country. And you could pick these things up now f that are running for between twenty-five hundred and five thousand dollars, depending on how depending on how you want it to, to, how good you want it to be. Uh, really good ones you can still find for between ten dollars and $20,000. So, you know, the rare ones are out there. But you can find good working models that are, you know, not in great shape aesthetically for around $3,900, which is what we paid for our original gray one. Um, the difference between the, the automatic and the manual transmission is pretty big. The manual is so much better than the automatic. It is... It is just, a, it is really kind of a pleasure to drive. It's stiff enough, but it's not, you know, you're not gonna be doing leg lifts. Uh, it's one of those cars where uh, you're gonna wanna have, or you're going to have fun driving it no matter where you are. Uh, the automatic's okay, it's not great. Uh, there's a lot of hesitation in it. Um, the throttle response is tweaked up between the comfort, sport, and advanced modes, but, uh, I, I, the manual is just better. <laughs> just go get the manual if you if you like to drive stick. So yeah, I mean, I'm pulling into my parking garage at work. Uh, I just wanted to make this quick update video and tell you guys what it's like to own these cars for a year. And quite honestly, it's been an absolute joy. Uh, I love this car. Uh, I'm definitely not selling it. For those of you that have stuck through this long on the video, if I had to choose between selling this car and the Aston Martin, I think I'd sell the Aston. Plus, it also sounds like this. <laughs> oh, we got some pops. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, God, this thing sounds great. I so much love this car. <laughs> it's so much fun. Oh, God. Well, that will do it. I am now parked up here in the parking garage at work. Uh, I'm going to head in and edit this video so you guys can see it on Wednesday. And yeah, the next actually video you see on this car, I think I misspoke earlier. The next video you see on this car will be uh, us going through exactly what we're going to do uh, to make this thing into an M3 killer. And uh, we're going to browse the FCP parts catalog and show you exactly what to get or what we're going to get to turn this thing into what it needs to be uh an enthusiast dad wagon that could slay an m3 in every conceivable way uh, we've already got them on space so we're good there but uh thank you so much for watching uh, if you did like the video give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you don't know who we are we uh do press events we do lifestyle events press drives uh as well as we have three other project cars um on top of this one we have the project is 300 we have project autocross brz we of course have this the project volvo v70r and we also have project v8 vantage so if you like any of those um, videos or series please click the links in the video below i will drop uh, links to all of those playlists down in the description and yeah that will do it thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more really fun volvo videos now that this thing is back on the road thanks for watching and i will catch you next time see ya